we've defined a number of low-level words, for example, one bit and words like clock high and clock low and master in, slave out, chip select, and these have allowed us to define an SPI protocol working on 16-bit transfers. If we were using a gyroscope or if we were using a display, any device that was an SPI device that used 16-bit transfers, all those routines would probably work fine for them. We could modify them easily for an SPI device that worked on 8-bit transfers. However, eventually we have to get device specific. So the device we're using is the CMA3000 and it has some specific ways of accessing it with specific registers that contain information that's of interest. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on some of those words. Um, in block 305 there's a word defined to read a register from the CMA3000. And in block 306 there's um, a word to initialize the CMA3000 in the operating mode that we'd like to run it in to measure acceleration on three axes, an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. These words are, are used to initialize the device in an operating mode that lets us read x, y, and z accelerations from the device. And you'll notice almost throughout the code base there's been little test routines, for example, named OSC for oscillate. And quite often during development we pause and we test the code that we've already written. For example, uh, to attach an oscilloscope to one of the pins that we're driving and run a routine like OSC, which if you look at the code, it toggles the pin repeatedly in a loop, which is very easy to uh, test on an oscilloscope. And when you're developing a fourth application, very frequently, that's how you develop. You write a word, you test it. You write a word, you test it. Sometimes the test is interactive, throw away. Sometimes you code a test routine and leave it there for future use. Sometimes the routine is self-contained. Um, you put a word on the stack, check and see if the word was what you want. Or in our case, when we're dealing with an external device, you often want to test the state of pins outside the um, device itself. So for example, an oscilloscope attached to a pin, or an LED attached to a pin, or just a multimeter to see if you can drive the pin high and then drive it low. So, um, once we've initialized the CMA3000 in an operating mode, it lets us um, access registers. So, there's a routine here, which I didn't put up by name, but it's in block 306, and it's called read x, y, and z. And it's responsible for accessing the registers on the CMA3000 and reading the register with the X acceleration, reading the register with the Y acceleration, and reading the register with the Z acceleration. And the code for that's in block 306. It's fairly straightforward. So how do we test a, a word like that? How do we test the functionality of our device? So, we have a little routine, in this case in block 306, called test, and it loops in an infinite loop, waiting for us to hit a, a key on the keyboard on our serial terminal, and it's executing our read the x, y, and z accelerations, and it's printing them from the top of stack, one set of accelerations per line, and with an accelerometer, quite often, it's sitting still. What happens when it sits still? You measure gravity. And when we read the manual for this device, um, we've set the CMA3000 to a particular scale factor. This particular device can be scaled, so full scale is 2G or 8G. And that gives us back a result that we know what to expect for gravity. So we can test it, place it flat. Gravity is going to be in one axis place it vertically, gravity is going to be on a different axis, so for example the x-axis or the y-axis, and then flip it in the other orientation, and 
you get gravity measured on that third axis. Depending on how flat the device is, all the other axes will read zero, or if it's not mounted exactly, or if we're not holding it steady, uh, we'll get small values in the other axes of the accelerometer. So if we ran this, we'd get values that might look something like this, a little bit of noise. Um, then if we flipped it over, we might get 15, zero, zero, or 15, zero, one. And it'll just scroll repeatedly until we hit a key on our keyboard. And so this is a little test routine. What might we use an accelerometer for? Well, you could, for example, perhaps measure someone's number of steps. So you'd get um, a increase in acceleration every time someone steps down. Or you might attach it to something that might fall. And when it's falling, the acceleration goes to zero due to gravity. And so you could detect a fall if this ever goes to zero, as an example. Another example might be to measure the orientation of something. So if you're expecting something to be always flat, then gravity is going to be in one direction. And if it moves, say it moves like that, then now instead of just measuring gravity on one axis, you might read it on two axes. And so you've detected a change in orientation of the device. So to summarize, We've started from not being able to access a remote port, a, a remote I.O. pin on a device which has 144 processors. And we've followed through in high-level polyforth. We've gone and we've been able to toggle a pin on a processor that we're not executing code directly on. And Initially, we toggled it high, we toggled it low, and then using that same technique, we defined a series of extra pins. So we started maybe with um, master out, slave in, and we defined the pin for master in, slave out, for chip select, for clock, and for interrupt, which we've ignored for now. And using those simple definitions, we built initially a word that allowed us to read and write simultaneously, because that's how the SPI interface works, read and write simultaneously a single bit, and then we um, executed that within a loop, which let us do a full word transfer, which for the CMA3000 accelerometer is a 16-bit transfer, and using the 16-bit transfers as a basis, we, which we didn't cover in detail, but it's in the uh, application note, we designed a word to read and write to a register on the CMA3000, and using that, we defined a word to read and write all three registers of interest during operation, the X acceleration, the Y acceleration, and the Z acceleration, and then we tested those routines. Um, at the end, via this one simple test, but as we were developing it, each, um, almost every every block of code included some test code. And of course, during development, sometimes we did interactive testing as well. We had an oscilloscope that we used for checking the data, and very, very quickly, we were able to go from, let's connect an SPI accelerometer to reading data from the accelerometer. So, where will we go from here? Well, that depends on what the application for this is. In some cases, maybe for a very low data rate sampling, maybe if a, detecting whether a large object has shifted, maybe this high-level code that we've implemented is perfect and we're done. Or perhaps we want to measure uh, very rapidly movements. Maybe we want to monitor someone uh, swing, swinging a bat or, or uh, hitting a golf ball. Uh, we'll have to sample faster than this high-level code will let us. Well, we've developed and debugged an entire method of accessing the accelerometer in high-level, which we can then replicate in Arrayforth, and it's guaranteed to run much faster. In fact, 
we'll be spending a lot of effort reducing the speed to match the timing of this particular SPI interfaced accelerometer. Thank you.